I've seriously been looking everywhere for this ring of my dad's, my dad who died when I was six, and I can't find it anywhere, and it's really bugging the hell out of me. And it's turquoise, and it's big, and I keep looking everywhere, and I keep thinking I'm going to find it, and I can't find it. And it's like seriously making me wonky. And I know it's here somewhere because I know I haven't lost it, but I keep like like touching places and hoping it's going to magically appear someday. It's totally not appearing. So I'm freaking out. Anyway, it's this ring that I remember him always wearing as a kid. And I thought it was buried uh, with him in his casket. And then my mom gave it to me a couple years ago and I can't find it anywhere. So I'm totally losing my mind. It's awesome. <laughs> Good times. I'm terrified I gave it away like in a purse or something and didn't mean to. So I'm um, anyway, that's what's going on with me today. <laughs> Oh, hey, how's it going? Facebook, it's nice to see you uh, for today's Monday Mayhem. So I really struggled. Hey, Patricia, how are you? I really struggled today with figuring out what to talk about because there's always just so much shit to talk about. And I hardly ever know where to start because sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. So um, I... Um, was thinking a lot about um, how I like to disrupt shit because I love, I just love disrupting shit and I love teaching other women how to disrupt shit. And so like I have been working on uh, building my coaching practice so that I can work with women and teach them how to disrupt shit. And I just taught a woman how to write a speech, um, not how to write a speech, but she's got a speech coming up because she's running for office here locally. And she was having that, she, the very first thing she said to me was, you know, people judge me a lot for my clothes because I wear short tight skirts and boots. And, and the minute she said that Aaron Brockovich totally popped into my head and I was like, oh my God, you have to totally quote Aaron Brockovich in your speech. <laughs> so we looked up Aaron Brockovich quotes and she was like, I never even thought about embracing that part of myself before. That's so great. I've always loved Aaron Brockovich because she's like a hero of mine. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, how fucking awesome is it that I get to work with women and, and teach them how to take those moments where they're like, people are constantly judging me for the way I look and being like, girl, you're the next Aaron Brockovich. Go out and sh like stir some shit up. I was just thinking how, fucking awesome that is. It's so rad. And it makes me so excited that that's like my life and that's fucking awesome. So if you've got some sort of a project or some sort, not even a project, but you've just been sitting around, like I have another client who's always wanted to be a writer, but she was stuck in that, but I can't be a writer because I don't know how to be a writer. And I was like, no, no, you're a writer. And she's got this vision of like this, like this person sitting at one of those old school typewriters, like typing, typing, typing away, like, you know, that Kermit the Frog uh, gif where he's like typing, typing, typing. And anyway, um, and so I said to her, I was like, but you're writing words on a page that makes you a writer, like you're writing words on a page. So it's been so amazing to watch her like expand uh, how she writes. So I give her these writing prompts and then she's writing and then we're doing all this other kick-ass like feminist based advocacy shit. And it's just awesome. So anyway, um, I'm really excited because I'm offering this coaching special where you get to hang out with me for an hour and at a reduced rate and you get to hang out with me for an hour and take me for a test drive and decide if there's like, so we can like totally brainstorm some badass kick-ass thing that you want to work on. And I'm really excited about it. So I hope y'all take advantage of that because it's really fucking cool and we have a lot of fun and we laugh and we're productive because that's the other thing. Like, I don't want to sit back and like coach some people and not have it be productive. So uh, cause I've done that and it's boring. So, Hey Kimbra, how are you? It's good to see you. Um, so anyway, if you want to work with me, I have a kick-ass, you know, coaching, take me for a test drive, vroom, vroom. Cause I drive a Camaro and I used to drive a Harley and I miss my Harley a lot of times. So anyway, that's what that's, I was just thinking how awesome it is. Hi, how awesome it is that I get to, um, work with kick-ass women and, and I've got space to work for more. So if you know anyone who like is sitting there trying to figure out how she wants to like get out and just say some shit, like send her my way. Cause that's, I'm having a really good time doing it. You used to have a Harley too, Kimbra? Of course you did. This is why we are soul sisters. Cause we had Harleys. 
I loved my Harley. I want one again, but uh, not now. I can't have one now because I got a, the Camaro. So, oh my God, it's so amazing. I'm so excited that we found that connection, Kevra, because that's just badass. So um, I've been thinking a lot, okay, so about how I disrupt shit. And one of the ways I disrupt shit is I help women figure out how to disrupt shit. And the other way I disrupt shit is I'm always trying to figure out sort of what is worthwhile to give my passion to. So I'm always, you know, I, I am highly distractible too. And so I see a shiny thing and I'm like, oh, maybe I should do that. And I'm really starting to learn how to like tap into what really, 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 truly is driving me and making me excited. So what is worthwhile to give my passion to and, and sort of figuring out how we know it when we see it. And I had, um, I had a friend call me and she was having, she needed my advice and she was dealing with some issues, some advocacy issues, um, in a new, uh, organization that she joined. And, you know, I really, there was a lot of, uh, and I see this all the time. Like this is not rare where women are just tearing other women down and it's getting worse. And I think it's getting worse because we're all freaking out about what's happening from the administration level and about what's happening in the country and in the world. And we're just kind of losing our minds and we're doing it in the safe space, which means we're doing it to other women. And anyway, I wrote, I was thinking about her situation and about how often I get called in. I get calls from women who are like, I need your help. And I need you. I just joined this organization and we're tearing each other apart. And what the hell is this shit? So I really think it's important to remember, like as we're disrupting, um, that advocacy in whatever form it takes is never going to be done perfectly for everyone. And if we are just being kind and loving and focused and we're being passionate, fierce and graceful, and at the same time, we are working to dismantle systems of oppression in all of their forms, then I think we're doing the work of the resistance. And I think we're doing the work that we're supposed to be doing. And so even though it's really easy for us to fall into this trap of telling somebody that they're wrong or they're doing something wrong or they're not good enough at, at engaging in activism or they're not saying the right thing when it comes to talking about systems of, of oppression like racism and classism and homophobia and transphobia and all the shit we have to talk about and ableism and all these things that we're not going to do it right all the time. I had a student totally call me on the fact that I used the word crazy and insane to, de to describe legislation and to describe political work and that using the term insane is derogatory to people who have developmental disabilities or have mental illness. And I was like, okay, like I have to figure out how that works. And of course, for like a week straight in class, I said it all the time because I was thinking about not saying it. So I said it constantly and I was like, I'm really sorry. I just want you to know that I'm trying and I'm making my best effort. But you know, I, I posted a Facebook live on here a couple of weeks ago and I actually have been obsessing about it because I said some shit like I'm not overly proud of in hindsight, but I'm like, I looked at it, I looked at the post and it has had like 336 views and it's been shared a couple times. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna leave that shit up. Like I'm not gonna silence myself for saying something impulsively and stupid, even though I didn't mean to. Like I just, I was just riffing off the cuff. Like, you know, I do. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, how am I gonna disrupt some shit in my community? And I just started going to church and I am like Mormon light, right? Like I grew up Mormon-ish in Utah. And so I have been like, fuck religion, fuck Christianity, fuck it all. Like people are mean, religion is mean, religion is bad. You know, I'm a queer woman and, and who like was doing work in Utah and I was like, religion, bad, bad, bad. And then all of a sudden we come here and one of the things that the kids kept saying was we want to go to church. And I was like, ah. So I needed a church that was feminist enough for me because I cannot go to a queer hating church and Bible enough for Jim because Jim is like super, he's Baptist and Catholic. So, and a little bit Presbyterian. So I was like, oh shit, <laughs> like we're going to have to find a really fascinating church. Hey Heidi, how are you? So we had to find like a queer loving feminist church that engaged in social justice and still had like really core beliefs about the Bible. And so that was a challenge. So I called upon my friend Mark and I was like, help me. 
and he connected us with the Episcopal Church. So here is how I am dismantling Christianity now, because this is my new favorite thing to do. So now I get to dismantle Christianity. And by the way, let's just be really clear. I take notes while the priest is preaching in, in church. And, um, and I tend to get really inspired. And I actually cried all in church. I cry in church every week. I think it's really ridiculous. I didn't even know that I wanted church until I started going. But, and now I'm like on the board of the social justice committee. I'm on, I'm the secretary. And now I, so here's how I'm disrupting Christianity. So I had this, they have this group called the Guerrilla Scholars. And it's a whole bunch of PhDs uh, who study all sorts of different things. And they asked me to do a five week lecture series about the Old Testament and social justice. Hey, Judy, how are you? So I'm putting together, I put together a five week Lenten series for Lent about social justice and the Old Testament. So this is how I'm disrupting some shit. Me and my buddy Sheldon, we're going to do, he's going to speak for a half an hour about the Old Testament because I don't even get any of that. And I'm going to speak for 30 minutes about a topic from the Old Testament about current policy today. And we're totally, totally, totally going to disrupt the Christianity model by talking about how the Old Testament can inform charity and save the safety net today. And I'm really excited about it because whoever thought the Dr. Melissa Bird PhD would be like in church, connecting with people, getting ready to fuck some shit up by bringing in the Old Testament to talk about current social justice issues like homeless women and eviction and, um, and uh, consumer debt and how we've lost all our consumer debt protections. And so I'm really excited because I know Heidi, you, you yes, <laughs> I never thought it possible either because I, I hated religion. And so, so here I am like, Jim's totally blown away because he's like, I can't believe you're so into church, but I love church. I love church. And so I'm so ridiculous about it. Like I am loving church. And so I am so excited to for five weeks and it's going to be videotaped you guys. So if you're not here in Corvallis, so if you're here in Corvallis, you have to come. It's on Wednesday night and there's going to be a potluck because there's always food at the church. And so, but if you're not here, you get to watch it online on video because we're videotaping it. And I'm so excited because I'm hoping we can take the show on the road and like do some stuff at the Episcopal churches all over the place. So I'm really, really excited because I feel like if we can disrupt Christianity and question it in a way that also is advocacy and justice focused, then holy crap, it's going to like, it's going to blow it up, right? Like I just keep thinking there has to be a way to kind of blow this up a little bit. And I think we're, if we can dismantle that oppression of judgmental Christianity and focus on the safety net and um, being passionate and fierce and graceful when it comes to helping, especially people who are living on the edge of debt and um, who are homeless and especially women. And I just really, I'm really excited about it. I'm just really, really stinking excited about it. And so those are the things that I'm excited about disrupting this week uh, for your Monday Mayhem. So I'm really excited about disrupting Christianity because I just, I just think it's like, it's just time. It's so much time. And then I'm really excited about all the women I've gotten to work with um, and helping them disrupt their own little corners of their community. And I really just want you all to know that I have this program called Take Me For A Test Drive. And if you know anybody who's even thinking about doing something in their community or who keeps saying to you, like, I just have this one thing. I don't know how to do it. Like, I really just want to get out and do something and I don't know how then send them my way because I'm doing, they can meet with me for an hour and get coached for an hour and come out with a product really quickly for only $199, which is like $51 cheaper than it norm, than my hourly weight new, normally is. And I'm just really excited about it because I want to bring in as many women as possible in the month of February to get them to that place where like, They've written the speech that's based on Aaron Brockovich's kick-ass advocacy, or they've written the story that they never thought they would write about, um, about what they think about feminism and how they're going to make that shift. And I just, 
I really, really, really want to put it out there that to any of you, if you want to work with me for an hour, now is the time because I'm taking on clients and it's going to be really, really fun and exciting. So uh, I'm really happy to see all of you here. And I'm really happy that you are part of my community. And I, um, I just really, I just love y'all. And I'm just really, really happy to see you all here. And I hope, um, I hope that you get on over on the blog and sign up for my, my newsletter. And also that you just share this stuff. Just keep sharing, sharing, sharing all my stuff because it's been really fun to build my community and I really love it. And I love that every single one of you on this Facebook Live right now brings me such joy and happiness in so many different ways. And I just love it. So let's go disrupt some Christianity because that's really like my big my big jam today. So um, I love y'all and I hope you have a super, super awesome day. Oh, oh, oh. And my book came out. Like, so there's a link to the publisher and you can buy my book and it, it's like pre-orders or something. I don't know. So anyway, I'm really excited. Careers in Social Justice Advocacy. So yay, go me. Um, I love you all. Have a beautiful day. Have a gorgeous week. I'll see you on Friday. Facebook Live. Talk to you on Friday. Go get, go just, just go light it up, y'all. See you.